Before this video starts, I want to say thank you because we just hit 1,000 subscribers on this channel. Now subscribe because I need to beat Revishon before 2025. Now back to the video. Yo, what's up guys? I hope everyone at home is doing well. Today I'm going to do a different kind of video from what I normally do, showing exactly what I do in the day of my life. Because in my YouTube like comments thing, I, I get asked a lot of questions and the number one most frequently asked question is, Shamir, how are you so handsome? But the second most <laughs> asked question is, how are you so productive? You have so much on your plate, you have four A-levels, you have a YouTube channel and you try to be a bodybuilder, how are you so productive? So in this video, I'm going to be going over exactly what I do every single day, just to, just to provide you with an insight on what goes on every single day, or what I try to make my day look like. So as you can see here, I am starting off the day beforehand, planning my day in advance. I use these like planner template things that I made myself and I like actually recently moved over to Notion. And basically what the consensus of this is, is that I try to plan my day before the day occurs because I get up like really, really early and I try to already know what I'm gonna study before I start studying. I then pack my bag for the upcoming day. <laughs> I did not bring a cordless screwdriver to school. That was a joke. Please don't like report me or something. I then take the past papers I had printed off for the upcoming day, just so I'm a little more organized in the morning. I then wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning and then proceed to make my bed. If anyone is wondering why I wake up so early, Go watch my full guide to monk mode where I explain that for me at least I find waking up in the morning like really really helpful when it comes to productivity. So I then proceed to go downstairs and make myself a cup of coffee. Despite what other people may say, black coffee is actually really, really like helpful for productivity. For me at least, the taste doesn't really matter. I just really like the rush you get when you like consume this really, really strong drink. It's like an energy drink, but not as unhealthy. I then go upstairs and give myself the daily dose of body dysmorphia before jumping in the shower and turning the water to its coldest temperature. You gotta be 100%, that's why taking freezing cold showers in the morning is the way to go. After giving myself a bit more body dysmorphia, I decide it's time to get down and get some work done. When I was younger, I used to start revising as soon as I got up, but now I realize that this isn't really the right way to do it. Instead, what I do is I visualize myself studying and going through that day in my brain. And then I find that that really helps me with staying productive throughout the day. I think in the book Psycho-Cybernetics, the author talks about this at length. That's why I'm not sleeping. <laughs> I'm actually just meditating and visualizing the day. I then proceed to journal for a bit more, just gratitude journaling. And it's just when you are grateful for the things you have and you just write them down. It's just a mechanism to stay happier at times of intense stress because I feel like I get stressed a lot. And if I can just be grateful for the littler, the smaller things, sorry, then a lot of the stress goes away. I'll make a full video on how to get rid of stress in the future. It's now around 4.30 a.m. and I proceed to start with some computer science past papers. For me, computer science is a subject where you really need to do practice questions. At GCSE, you could get away with just using Anki, but now I think I need to use Anki, which is like a flashcard application, if you don't know. Anki is genuinely one of the best applications for memorization out there. I genuinely think that there's no other tool out there better than Anki is that makes you remember stuff. But for like problem solving subjects, I don't think Anki is enough and you do need to rinse out some past paper questions. So as you can see in the video, I'm just 
grinding through some past papers. I think we were studying databases uh, in computer science, which is like a way of organizing data and it can get quite tricky at times. So I was just doing some past questions from a different exam board, I think. I do AQA. I, was, I think I was doing like Edexcel past paper questions because it's not really about the exam board. It's about the practice you get like, utilizing that topic and applying that topic in the question. So as you can see, uh, I didn't have a stapler with me, so I had to print out each individual sheet and flip them over individually. And my pen had run out, so I was using some random pen I found off the floor. <laughs> If you're wondering why I have random pieces of paper stuck up on my wall, I can explain, I'm not a weirdo. Well, I don't think I am, anyways. Basically, for me at least, I feel like having my goals in my face when I revise really motivates me towards them. So when I have, for example, fitness goals and academic goals and even YouTube goals right in my face, it really helps me visualize and helps me drive towards my goals. I went through an entire process on how to set goals and how to really improve your consistency towards them in a video titled A Full Guide to Monk Mode. And basically in this video, I go over how I personally stay motivated, even with the many, many distractions that come with turning 17 in the UK. And this idea was inspired by a somewhat controversial YouTuber named Hamza, who has really helped me push towards my goals and really help me achieve academic success. A lot of people ask me what the difference between GCSE and A levels are and personally for computer science, maths, further maths and even maths, I feel like the main difference is that the habits you build at GCSE will show at A level. That's the easiest way of describing the jump. If you have really, really bad habits and you just cry them the night before, it's not really gonna work out at A-level just because of the heavy content you're learning every single day. And especially if you're doing like a practice, practice dominated subject like maths or further maths in A-levels, there's no way you're gonna be able to compensate for that like two days before the exam. So my advice for people doing A-levels or going to do like practice dominated A-levels is just keep consistent with the workload. Just keep on going over it week by week. It doesn't have to be every day, but keep on reviewing material and keep on top of your workload at A-levels. Otherwise you will really start to fall behind. Take this with a grain of salt just because I'm in year 12 and I could get, I don't know, I, I still could get four U's and get rejected by every single university, but I got pretty good grades at GCSE and I hope this will carry on to A-levels. I then finished my two hour block of revision and I decided to have a little five minute break. The time's around 6.33 as you can see on my monitor. And I decided to go downstairs, fill out my water bottle, go to the toilet, do some like random stuff. Just before I start my next two hour revision session, I like to have a break in between studying four hours. I can't study four hours at a time. I remember when I was younger, I tried to study like insane amount of hours, like 10 hours a day, but I would always get literally no work done. So I've, trust me, I've tried it and working more than let's say in two hour blocks doesn't really work at least for me as you can see through my window the sun is starting to rise up and i move to some physics work i think i'm doing mechanics and mechanics is one of those chapters where it's quite hard to do the actual practice questions the content isn't that hard so there's like four form of formulas you have to learn and it's about like objects interacting and the forces acting on them but the questions seem to get like randomly hard sometimes they ask you some random stuff that you've never seen before so you really need to be prepared for mechanics questions that's why rinsing out practice papers for physics maths further maths even computer science is genuinely one of the best things you can do if you're wondering what the difference between taking three and four a levels is the extra additional a level is approximately equivalent to about five gcses so if you're doing three a levels you're going to do about 15 gcses if, if you compare them like that and if you're doing four you're taking about 20 gcses and if you take five like some of my friends <laughs> who literally don't like their mental health i'm pretty sure take about 25 gcses and it's honestly correlated to the amount of stress you can take if you can take a lot of stress and you can still perform take four a levels and if you can't i probably wouldn't 
recommend you taking four A levels or even five. <laughs> Don't take any more than three if you can't handle a lot of stress because it is a lot of stress when you come to year 12. There's a lot of random stuff you need to learn, and that's why I'm trying to work as hard as possible to smash those four A levels. I then finish up my last study block of two hours by finishing off my mechanics questions and then I spend some time intentionally journaling about how this session could be better and what I could do to refine my A-level system. I've now actually built a system around how I intend to get good grades at A-levels so maybe I'll make a video on that in the future but basically I have a systemized way now on Notion of how I aim to get good grades but again take this with a grain of salt because I still am in year 12. I then finish my journaling session and then struggle for the next two minutes to put on my shoes. As you can see, it's quite hard to put on your shoes without any hands. I then go outside where the, t the temperatures are literally freezing and I don't even have a coat. And then I jump in the car and get straight onto my flashcard app called Anki. If you haven't heard, Anki is a flashcard app and it's basically the steroids of revision. It basically helps you so much and I don't understand like how I would get any good grades without using the app. I'll actually give a full guide to how to use Anki in the near future, unlike Odoka Fintelman. <laughs> he hasn't still uploaded that video, man. If you know who I'm talking about, there's this guy named Odoka Fintelman and since like two years ago he's been saying he's been he'll be uploading a he'll be uploading a video on how to use Anki and I was waiting for that video but it still hasn't released. So I'll actually give you a full video on how to use Anki and the settings I use for A-levels and how if you're doing GCSEs, what settings I use then. I get out of my car and then walk to my first lesson which is double further maths. In further maths I think we learn about vectors which is basically a way of representing from one point to another but we do that on steroids and we do some like next level stuff with um, vectors. If you take further maths you'll come to know what I'm talking about but that was pretty fun and then I have for a form time. I'm sorry I couldn't get that much footage when it came to like lessons and stuff because everyone looked at me like I was some kind of weirdo but please try to understand I'm holding my social reputation at stake. I was thoroughly disappointed. Yeah, I didn't really care what he had to say either. Anyways, I moved on to my last lesson of the day, which was physics. I actually got it wrong when I told you what lessons I had in the day. I actually had double further maths and, I, and then I had a free and then I had physics at the end. In physics, we were doing waves and it's way, way more advanced than in GCSEs. In physics, you do stuff like first harmonics, which is like stationary waves and stuff but in like GCSE you just see how waves interact but not to say that it's any harder it's just the amount of content that's more. I then end my day by trying to process what happened in that physics lesson by taking a little walk outside my school and then waiting till my mum comes and picks me up. In the car I start doing Anki once again. Unusual for me I had already made flashcards on waves beforehand so I was just going over those in the car and as you can see, even though the screen recordings actually sped up in the car, I'm actually struggling with every single flashcard because of how hard the content is. Maybe it's gonna get easier when I do some practice questions, but in general, it's just a hard chapter in my opinion. I then get out of my car and then rush straight to my room. I like to get changed as soon as I come back into the house, into my gym wear because I don't know, it just motivates me to do well in the one or two hours I spend revising at home just because it, it just motivates me to go have fun in the gym after I stop revising. I then go home and try to do some practice questions on further vectors that we had covered in class. I try get my head around the dot product and cross product and distance between two skews we were taught in class and that takes some time. If I was to give one tip to my year 11 self about preparing for A-levels during GCSEs or during year 11, it would be to just be on your toes, just be alert at all times in lessons. I know I was that kid who would just like zone out of lessons and just wouldn't understand anything the teacher was saying, but that you can't afford to do that during A-levels. You just have to be present during A-levels. You just have to focus in on what the teacher's saying. You just can't afford to just like be thinking about going to the gym or something during your lessons because you're gonna, before you know it, you're gonna start falling behind. And that's happened to me like 
loads and loads of times throughout my A-levels, but only now I've realized that, oh, I actually need to listen to the teacher. Because during my GCSEs, all I would do is literally just muck about in class and then just go home and revise, but you can't afford to do that in A-levels. And that's one thing I really, really want to stress on. Anyone watching this video now that's going to take something like further math to A-level, which is really, really hard. You just have to pay attention at all times during your lessons. And if you don't want to do that, I would reconsider taking the subject itself. I then finish up my math lesson by just going over the graphs of sine, cos, tan again because I feel like you really need to know those off by heart when you come to doing past papers and stuff so I'm just going over them and then I move to scripting my newest video on English literature. I actually plan to release that video sometime in the future so just just uh, stay tuned. If, if you haven't read my community post, what had happened was I had scripted, edited and pu like nearly published the video at the time of this recording. But then my editing software crashed and, and I lost all of my edits that came to my English literature video. But this is before I had filmed it and stuff. So this is me from the future. But I just spend the next few minutes just planning and scripting my newest English literature video. If you're if you're a new viewer and you haven't looked through my past like content on this channel, uh, I plan to make this channel some sort of reflection of my own self improvement and academic journey in general because I feel like there's a lot of people out there, especially study YouTubers, that really synthesize and mask what they're actually going through when they're like studying or in their self improvement journey because I feel like there's a lot of like clickbait titles on like three best ways to get this grade or something, three best ways to make side hustles online. But if I can come to you and provide you with like a full guide on like English literature or any other topic to do with like academics or self improvement where I go into like crazy details of like exactly where I failed uh, in English literature I literally couldn't read the book for so long I literally couldn't read and then I managed to get a good grade I feel like that would provide more value to someone who's not doing as well than just saying oh yeah I was the best student and I just got a good grade so basically what I'm planning to do is take a kind of hit to my ego wherein I don't present myself as like the best student or anything but in return for that I make you as the viewer value the information coming outside my mouth more i don't know this is getting way too deep in this video but i just plan my english literature video as normal i'm researching using a variety of different sources i'm also talking to like old english literature students who also got a nine i got a nine so it's chill <laughs> make sure you watch that video though at around 6 30 i then end all my academic and work related stuff for the day and then i begin my hike to the gym i get on my shoes which i still struggle for for the next two minutes and then begin running through the forest. My gym has like two ways to get to it. You can go through the roadway, you can go through the forest way. I always choose the forest way just because it's a really nice place to run. Even though it's like pitch black at night, I just like running there just because of the nature around. I don't know, maybe I'm a weirdo. At the gym, I'm training chest and triceps. And as you can see, I'm giving myself another dose of body dysmorphia. I feel like my gym is really, really nice because it's just close to my house and I just can go pretty much every day if I want to. I know a lot of other people have to literally travel half an hour to get to the gym, but I'm almost blessed to have a gym so close to my house. I track my apps with a app I forgot the name of, but it's really good. It just like lets you track all of the stuff and it shows your progress over time. I've been using this recently and I've really liked it. After finishing a very, very tough workout at the gym and talking to a lot of my friends, I begin my run home at the end of the day. I reflect upon my day and all the stuff I had got accomplished on that day. I feel pretty productive, but I know that this can't be sustained every single day. So if you're thinking that I can do this every single day without any breaks, you're wrong. I try to aim for this like productive day every single day. However, there are days that I do like mess up. So don't think I'm some kind of superhuman or Ali Abdal <laughs> level productivity. I am just like you, uh, not that productive. As this video comes to its conclusion, I wanna end on the quote of the day that I got from Ryan Holiday. I posted this on my Instagram, so go follow me on my Instagram right now. But the quote goes, remember to conduct yourself as if at a banquet. Reach your hand and take a moderate helping. Does the food pass by you? Don't stop it, it hasn't come yet. Act this way in all parts of life. 
and avoid these mediocre forms of low highs of instant gratification, as these will soon be replaced by a new high, the most high. And then get back home, go take a shower and get changed. Before I go to sleep, I plan out by the next day on Notion, and then I admire my forearm pump. I then tick off the tasks I got done today, and then prepare for a new day tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in many to come.